Today's Steelers Talk video is sponsored by Hexclad. Get 10% off their premium cookware today when you go to hexclad.com slash chat and use promo code chat. And we have breaking news here for the Pittsburgh Steelers on this beautiful Monday as the Steelers have signed cornerbacks Neville Clark and Lavert Hill and have waived Duke Dawson and Isaiah Dunn. Can't wait to break this down with you guys. So let's just jump right into it here. Let's take a look at the updated Steelers cornerback depth chart here. You take Duke Duke Dawson off. I put Neville Clark on there. Lavert Hill is also joining the team. Now let's talk about these guys for a little bit. Neville Clark, cornerback, slot corner uh, out of the University of Central Florida, has kind of bounced around a little bit, played in the USFL. And I'm looking at him, and he came in for a workout. He seemed to impress, and he was the first guy the Steelers were able to come to an agreement with. And then also just now they have signed – Former Michigan All-Big Ten cornerback Lavert Hill, third-team All-American with Big Blue as well. And I look at a guy like Lavert Hill, very good pedigree for somebody still available at this point in uh, the process of the NFL season, where you know we're we're already past the first preseason game, game, and a guy that athletic with Lavert Hill, who played alongside David Long Jr., a cornerback that is currently in the NFL, pretty darn good NFL corner right now. And Lavert was clearly the better of the two corners there at the University of Michigan when the, those two were on the team. And I think that Lavert is definitely an interesting player that I'm going to be keeping my eye on. Now let's talk about some of the Steelers that were waived today. Duke Dawson, unfortunately, uh, had a had a knee injury in the preseason game against the Buccaneers last Friday. It looked pretty serious. We haven't heard official word on what exactly happened with his knee. Hopefully, we can get a little bit of an answer for that. But he was on. The, but he's been put on the waived slash injured list. So if he doesn't get picked up by another team, and I don't really expect any team to really swoop him up at this point, he will be on the injured list for the Steelers for the remaining. Uh, days of the 2023 season, and he will be back with the Steelers organization next year. And then Isaiah Dunn was not put on the injured list. He was just waived by the Pittsburgh Steelers today. Uh, he was injured in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers game on Friday, but they're just letting him go. They're not wanting to keep him around in the organization for whatever reason, and they have brought in the two new corners to kind of take uh, to take his spot on the on the Steelers roster right now in training camp. Now, I will say that these two corners that have come in for the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're going to have their work cut out for them. They are at the bottom of the Steelers' depth chart. They're only going to have two preseason games to really show what they can do. They're going to have just this week to really figure out the playbook, all these different things, get the verbiage in Mike Tomlin and Terrell Austin's defense, and really build some chemistry in the practices this week. Of course, the Steelers are off today. They had a couple of workouts. Uh, both of these guys did work out for the Steelers today, and apparently they did well enough where uh, Omar Khan and Mike Tomlin feel like they were uh, worthy additions to this roster at this point. Now, be honest with me down there in the comment section. What is your one-word reaction to these signings? Let me know down there in the comment section. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So whenever YouTube throws you an ad break here, just do me a favor. Go down there, find that pinned comment, and answer today's pinned question. For me, my one word is man, man. It's just, you know, these guys, I mean, Lavert Hill is definitely interesting. He's got a pretty decent pedigree. He was all XFL this spring, so he's definitely played some decent ball uh, in the recent history, but I, I definitely think these guys are going to have their work cut up for them. It's going to be an uphill battle for both, for both of these guys to end up making the final roster for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think Madre Harper has a better shot than these guys. Chris Wilcox is, probably has a better shot than these guys at this point. Like I look at the guys on the roster, and I think that they probably have a better shot than these new guys uh, to make the final 53, but that's just me. Now let's get into some injury updates for the Black and gold where there was a couple of players that just simply did not practice yesterday on Sunday. We had five players that did not practice. Duke Dawson was one of those players is now waived and put on the injured list for the season. Larry Ogan Joby, definitely one to keep your eye on. He was seen in a walking boot yesterday at practice. Nick Kwiatkowski, the inside linebacker. Uh, Keanu Benson, somebody that really showed out in that preseason game against the Buccaneers last week. He did not practice on Sunday. And then Trey Norris 
Norwood as well. Cornerback slash safety, kind of a, a hybrid defensive back there, did not practice either. And then also limited in practice on Sunday, not Monday, that's my bad. Uh, Joey Porter Jr., the cornerback out of Penn State, was limited, did not participate in team drills. Keanu Neal, the safety, once again, limited in practice. Nate Herbig, a new addition to the injury report, was uh, limited. Toby and Duque and John Lovett. Uh, those two players as well were limited in yesterday's practice. But, you know, the big news of the day, I think, yesterday was that DeMonte KZ, free safety, strong safety, hybrid type player, is going to be playing alongside Minka Fitzpatrick in the secondary for the Steelers this year. High energy guy, really love him, really love his presence on the field, has been dealing with an injury here over the last week or so, and he finally got back to being a full participant, did not participate in uh, the Friday, uh, Friday night's preseason game against Tampa Bay, but DeMonte is somebody that you definitely want on the practice field. He brings the juice, he brings the energy, and he's somebody that's a playmaker. Man, he had two interceptions and limited snaps last year because he was injured for the black and gold for a large portion of last season. This year, he's expected to take on a much larger role, and it's definitely good to see him fully healthy here, or at least a uh, full participant in practice as we head into the second week of the preseason. Now, coming up here, I'm going to tell you why I am worried, officially worried, about Matt Canada's offense after breaking down the All-22 film from Friday night's win over the Buccaneers. But before I do that, let's have a word from our sponsor at HexClap. All right, guys, it's time to talk about your kitchen. And no, I'm not talking about the dirty dishes that are still sitting in your sink. Today's sponsor, Hexclad, has revolutionized the cookware industry with a hybrid pan that gives you all the convenience and cleanup of a nonstick, the versatility of your grandma's cast iron, and a lifetime warranty just in case you find a way to destroy it. Use promo code CHAT at hexclad.com slash chat for 10% off today. Hexclad truly checks every single box when it comes to picking your cookware. They are metal utensil safe, dishwasher safe, and oven safe up to 500 degrees. But don't just take my word for it, guys. Celebrity chef Gordon Ramsay uses these pans in his own home kitchen. This is what Gordon has to say. The sear I can get with these pans is incredible with absolutely no stick. The temperature control is utter perfection, and the cleanup is effortless. I love using Hexclad at home, and let me tell you guys, these things are also the sexiest pans on the market. Look how clean this sucker is. This is my very own Hexclad pan. I use two to three times a week uh, to pan sear chicken, steaks, what have you, making eggs on Sundays as well. I use that thing for everything, and it still looks super clean. You can look at it right here, man. Super easy cleanup. It looks brand new out of the box, and I use it just about every single day. I guarantee you, you will score points with this pan. It's time to stop ordering delivery food and start cooking like a big boy with Hexclad today. Real cuisine isn't made in a microwave. It's cooked in a Hexclad. So for a limited time, get 10% off with our special link, hexclad.com slash chat. That's 10% off at H-E-X-C-L-A-D dot com slash chat with code chat. All right, now let's talk about Matt Canada's offense here where I am officially, officially worried about Matt Canada heading into 2023. And you know what? I looked over the All-22 film from Friday night's game. And what I saw from Canada's offense, I was hoping to see a lot more modernized stuff. I was looking to see a lot more good things from this guy's offensive scheme, but I saw a lot of Hank. I saw a lot of spacing. I saw a lot of jet sweeps. I saw a lot of just bland, vanilla, gross NFL football out there, man. Like super basic concepts. Now, the thing is, it is just the preseason, right? So it could just be Matt Canada throwing out these super vanilla concepts just because it's the preseason. He doesn't want to give anything away, doesn't want to give away his new stuff. Uh, and I certainly hope that that's the case. But when I was going through the film there, the All-22 last night, I was like, this is the most, this is Matt Canada's offense right here, man. It's jet sweeps. It's super basic stuff that nobody's getting uh, really open in the middle of the field. There's nobody really getting yards after the catch unless they're catching like a Calvin Austin, the third touchdown down the, down the sideline or George Pickens making guys miss. Like there really isn't anybody getting yards after the catch and the offense isn't really helping that. And that was definitely worrisome to me. Now the big question is going to be, is that just preseason offense for Matt Canada or is that actually going to be his offense this year? Because if we're going to be running Hank, we're going to be running spacing on first down this year and we're not going to do something better, 
plain and simply, guys, like people that know football, they know there's so much better stuff to run than spacing and spot routes and all these different things that Matt Canada likes to run. And this has been the main criticism of Steelers fans when it comes to this offense. And, you know, if, if, that, if that performance, if that play calling sheet, what we saw from Friday is any indication of what we're going to see on Sundays this year, Buckle up, man, because Matt Canada is probably going to get his ass fired here by the end of the 2023 season. Really hope it's just preseason offense, but who knows? It definitely could be incompetence from the offensive coordinator, Matt Canada. Let me know what you think it was down there in the comment section. Do you think it's just the preseason offense? They just want to keep it basic. Give me a PO, or are you worried that Canada's incompetence is starting to show a little bit here? Give me a CO if you think Matt Canada isn't a good offensive coordinator in the National Football League. And speaking of the All-22, I did break down, or I did go over uh, the film from Friday night's win, and there is a couple of other takeaways that I took from that performance. And my first takeaway is I really wanted to confirm that Kenny Pickett played just as well as I thought he did, and he absolutely did. He checked all the boxes that I was looking for. You know, he was moving up in the pocket when he needed to. He looked like the pocket presence was was improved. You know, it was a smaller sample size, right? But I really liked what I saw from Kenny Pickett last Friday night. He was getting outside the pocket, throwing on the run, finding open receivers, making things happen, making good reads, getting through his progressions. Everything that you want to see from your franchise quarterback, Kenny Pickett showed that. And the only thing that maybe we didn't see from him is like, uh, a, a touchdown from the red zone, right? It was a long touchdown to George Pickens instead of one that was kind of closer to the red zone. That was Kenny's biggest struggle last year was getting touchdowns in the red zone. But, you know, overall, very good night. Nine of 11. Footwork looked really good. Looked like that he really had a good feel for the pocket, good feel for the game, and he really delivered some really great passes, and he really did look good. Friday night, I'm super excited to see him play throughout the preseason. And then my second takeaway that I haven't really talked about much on the channel here, I haven't talked about Broderick Jones and how he played for the Pittsburgh Steelers last Friday. And I thought that, you know, going through the film, first of all, he played a lot. He almost played the entire game. And second of all, he looked pretty darn good. Now, it wasn't perfect, right? It wasn't like an amazing performance, like a 100 out of 100. But man, Broderick looked pretty good throughout the game. Like he was, he was really doing a good job creating lanes for Anthony McFarlane later on in the game. He was doing a really good job uh, with his footwork. He was doing a good job in pass protection too, much better than I kind of expected given the reports coming out of camp. And then on Sunday's practice, he had his best day of camp yet. He was holding up... Nick Herbig, of all people, in practice, which is really impressive given the way Herbig has really ascended here to this point in the preseason process. And I'm looking at Broderick, and he's somebody that's on the rise. Mike Tomlin, the head coach, likes to say, you always got to be a guy on the rise. I think Broderick is one of those guys right now, and he's certainly making a path for himself to become that starting left tackle at some point here during the 2023 season. Now, that'll be it for today's show, guys, and for all the real ones that made it to the end of today's show go ahead and type real one in all caps for me down there in the comment section i want to see who made it to the end of today's show really do appreciate all the support guys i will see you guys later and as always here we go steelers